According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, every single day there are more than 2,000 work-related eye injuries. Those sobering statistics are worse when one considers that over a third of the injuries require a hospital visit, and many of these result in a lost time injury. What's worse is many of these injuries could be prevented by using proper controls, protection, and some common sense. Eye injuries are a serious problem. Value your eyes so you won't become a statistic. This video will discuss some of the more common ways you can prevent eye injuries. The contents of this video will cover scope and application, potential eye hazards, hazard assessment, eye safety protection program, training, contacts and prescription lenses, emergency procedures, The Occupational Health and Safety Administration, OSHA, mandates that employers provide a safe and healthy workplace for all employees, contractors, and visitors. When workers are subjected to hazards in the workplace that may affect their eyes, it is up to the employer to provide engineering and administrative controls to try and eliminate or lessen the hazard. When controls are not sufficient, employers must provide appropriate eye protection or personal protective equipment, PPE, and train employees on its function and proper use. Even though many people use PPE, it is considered the last resort for injury protection. Whether you work in construction, manufacturing, healthcare, or other fields, you are probably at risk of a possible eye injury. While most eye injuries are the result of small particles or objects striking the eye, injuring the tissues, or making abrasions, other types of injuries can occur. Things such as chemical splashes into the eye and looking into a welder's torch without proper protection can also cause injuries. There are many potential eye hazards in the workplace, including strain. Strain can be caused by a variety of reasons. The most common is because of either poor lighting or too much lighting, using a computer for long periods of time and using incorrect prescription glasses. And if you drive for a living, eye strain can be a major problem due to the glare of the sun, headlights, and even nighttime driving. Hazards from impact can cause some of the most dangerous eye injuries. Flying impact hazards include chips, slivers, sand, and dirt caused by a variety of job tasks. These tasks include chipping, grinding, machining, masonry work, woodworking, sawing, drilling, chiseling, using air, electric powered, and powered tools for fastening, riveting, and abrasive work such as sanding. Any operation that emits high heat can be dangerous to the eyes, including furnace operations, kilns, hot pouring, casting, and welding. Chemical hazards include splash, fumes, vapors, and irritating mists caused by such things as acid and chemical handling, degreasing, and working with blood. Even something as simple as mopping can create a chemical hazard. These hazards can be minimized by always handling chemicals properly. Other operations, such as painting, may also cause harmful mists that could cause an eye injury or irritation. Harmful dust, which can be created by woodworking, buffing, sandblasting, and general dusty or windy conditions. Radiant energy, glare, and intense light caused by welding, torch cutting, brazing, soldering, laser cutting work, 
laser instruments such as in surveying and copy machines. Workers need not be engaged in an actual work activity to incur an eye injury. Employees and others can incur injuries by working in close proximity to co-workers engaged in the various work activities which create the aforementioned hazards. It is essential to notify your supervisor if a co-worker or other activity is affecting your work area and potentially causing you an eye injury. A hazard assessment of each work area must be completed by the employer to determine if hazards exist or are likely to exist. Your employer will provide documentation regarding the results of the hazard assessment. Documentation of the hazard assessment should identify the workplace evaluated, the person certifying that the assessment has been performed, and the date of the hazard assessment. Documentation must be in written form and maintained at the workplace. Employers must use engineering and work practice controls to eliminate and reduce hazards before using personal protective equipment. PPE is considered the last level of defense against hazards. In order to assess the need for eye protection, these steps should be taken. A walkthrough of the areas in question should be conducted to identify and record sources of hazards. Dangers should be determined by assessing the tasks involved, the employee performing tasks, and or group of employees if employees perform identical tasks. Basic hazard categories that should be considered include those discussed earlier, but your assessment can include others. Be sure to include these basic items in your assessment. Eye strain, impact, heat, chemical, dust, light, optical radiation. Data and information obtained during the walkthrough and assessment should be organized and analyzed to enable proper selection of eye protection. Each hazard should be reviewed and a determination made as to the type, level of risk, and seriousness of any potential injury from each hazard found. The possibility of multiple hazards occurring simultaneously must also be considered. The assessment is the blueprint for success. Do not cut corners when analyzing the data obtained from the walkthrough assessment. If hazards exist or are likely to exist, then the employer must provide eye protection that will protect the affected employee from the hazards identified in the assessment, communicate selection decisions to each affected employee, and select eye protection that properly fits each affected employee and ensure the employee uses the PPE. Remember, if your company allows visitors to visit or come through an affected area that requires safety glasses, you must also provide ample protection for them. An eye safety protection program is necessary to protect employees from the hazards identified in the hazard assessment. The program should, as a minimum, include selection, fit testing, maintenance and care, and training. As part of the process of hazard assessment, the selection of the proper type of eye protection is paramount. Just because a type of glasses may cover the eye, it may not be correct for the hazard encountered. There are different types of eye and face protection, and it is important to understand the difference and purpose of each of the various types of eye protection. Safety glasses, or spectacles, are the most common type of protection. Most protection is governed by the ANSI Z87 standard, which is an industry guideline to the type of safety glasses. Safety glasses are intended to shield an employee's eyes from a variety of hazards. Different lenses are usually required depending upon the hazard. Employees are required to use safety glasses with side shields when there is a hazard from flying objects. Glasses without side shields are not acceptable eye protection for impact hazards, and most industries require the use of side shields in the safety glasses. 
Safety glass frames can be constructed of either metal and or plastic. Corrective, prescription, or impact resistant lenses can be used. Additionally, side shields may be incorporated into the frames when needed. Goggles, sometimes referred to as chemical goggles, shield the wearer's eyes from impact, heat, chemical, and dust hazards, depending upon the type of lenses, frame, and ventilation. Goggles fit the face immediately surrounding the eyes and form a protective seal around the eyes. This prevents objects from entering under or around the goggles. Safety goggles may incorporate prescription lenses mounted behind protective lenses for individuals requiring vision correction. Safety goggle frames must be properly fitted to the employee's face to form a protective seal around the eyes. Poorly fitted goggles will not offer the necessary protection. Some goggles may be worn directly over prescription lenses without any issues. Goggles with ventilation allow air circulation while providing protection against airborne particles, dust, liquids, or light. Face shields are considered secondary protectors to be used in addition to primary protection, such as safety glasses or goggles. It is always recommended to wear safety glasses or goggles under all types of face shields, including welding face shields. Face shield windows are made with different transparent materials and in varying degrees or levels of thickness. These levels should correspond with specific tasks. Window and headgear devices are available in various combinations to enable the worker to select the appropriate equipment. Wear hard hats in addition to the face shield where indicated. Face shield windows extend from the brow to below the chin and across the entire width of the face. Headgear can be used to support the window shield and secure the device to the head. For welding, be sure that the face shield has the appropriate shade of glass in the shield window for the task to be performed. Shade window numbers are calculated by amount of visible light and are numbered from 2 to 14 based on a mathematical formula. OSHA has a shade recommendation chart. The chart has recommendations for lens filters for specific welding operations. It is highly recommended that you stay within two shades of the number listed. As stated earlier, all eye and face protection must comply with the American National Standards Institute, ANSI Z87.1 standard. All eye and face PPE must be clearly marked to facilitate identification of the manufacturer. The following minimum requirements must be met by all protective devices. Protectors must provide adequate protection against the particular hazards for which they are designed, be of safe design and construction for the work to be performed, be reasonably comfortable when worn under the designated conditions, fit snugly and not unduly interfere with the movements of the wearer, be durable, be easily cleanable, be capable of being disinfected, Eye protection must meet the criteria for usage for the hazards it is used to protect against. Be sure you are aware of all the hazards the area may be subject to before selecting eye protection. The eye protector may look appropriate for the hazard, but in reality may not provide the correct protection. For instance, lenses can be clear, tinted, photochromic, or polarized. Each type of lens offers different levels of protection. Lenses can be tinted and still provide no protection. Tinting may look good, but may offer little or no extra protection. Always check the PPE manufacturer's guidelines to ensure proper usage and protection. It is important to consider the fit and comfort when choosing and using eye and face PPE. Poorly fitting PPE will not offer the necessary protection and could be damaging to the user. Goggles and safety glasses should be fitted by a professional that is skilled in the fitting procedure. PPE with adjustable features should be fitted on an individual basis to ensure a comfortable fit that maintains the device in the proper position.
Prescription safety glasses should be fitted and adjusted by qualified optical personnel, such as an optician. Eye protection from dust and chemical splash should form a protective seal when fitted. Welding helmets and face shields must be properly fitted to ensure they will not fall off during work operations, creating exposure hazards. Maintenance is an important part of any eye protection and PPE program. If a piece of equipment is in need of repair, get it repaired. Do not use it. If it is not repairable, throw it away and get a replacement. All PPE must be used and maintained in a sanitary and reliable condition. Use of PPE with structural or optical defects is prohibited. Examine safety glasses, face shields, etc. before each use. Pitted and or dirty lenses can reduce vision. Clean or replace lenses as necessary. Deeply scratched or excessively pitted lenses are likely to break. Slack, worn, sweat-soaked, or twisted headbands will not hold the eye protector in the proper position. A visual inspection will determine if the headband elasticity is reduced to a point beyond correct function. Atmospheric conditions and the restricted ventilation can cause lenses to fog so that frequent cleaning may be necessary. Eye and face protection equipment should be cleaned and disinfected after being used and before being issued to another employee. Eye and face protection assigned to employees for extended periods should be cleaned and disinfected regularly. Several methods for disinfecting eye protective equipment are possible. It is best to disassemble the goggles or glasses and thoroughly clean all parts with soap and warm water. Carefully rinse all traces of soap and replace defective parts as necessary. Swab thoroughly or completely and immerse all parts for at least 10 minutes in a solution of germicidal deodorant fungicide. Remove parts from solution and suspend or put in dish rack in a clean place for air drying at room temperature or with heated air. Do not rinse after removing parts from the solution because this will remove the germicidal residue that retains its effectiveness after drying. PPE should always be stored in an appropriate manner when not in use. Place in a clean, dust-proof container until needed. It is important to follow manufacturer's guidelines for additional storage rules. Treat safety glasses in the same manner you would your own glasses, since the frame, nose, pads, and temples can be damaged by rough usage. Replace safety glasses if damaged. Employees required to use eye protection must be properly trained. They should know at least the following when eye protection is necessary, what eye protection is necessary, how to put on, adjust, wear, and take off, limitations of the eye protection, proper care, maintenance, useful life, and disposal of the eye protection. Training should be conducted by a knowledgeable and experienced person and presented in a manner the employee can understand. Each affected employee must be able to demonstrate an understanding of the training and the ability to use the eye protection properly before being allowed to perform the work requiring the use of the eye protection. Employers who allow their employees to wear eye and face protection on a voluntary basis when not required by OSHA or the employer must implement limited provisions of an eye safety protection program. Even if eye protection is not mandatory, the employer must follow OSHA training and eye safety protection program for use. For all other voluntary uses, an additional written eye and face protection program that covers proper maintenance procedures must be implemented. Consult the OSHA regulation guide for the program outline and guidelines. The employer is required to retrain employees when changes in the workplace render previous training obsolete. Changes in the types of eye protection to be used render previous training obsolete. 
or inadequacies in an affected employee's knowledge or use of assigned eye protection indicate the employee has not retained the requisite understanding or skill. The employer must verify each affected employee has received and understood the required training via a written certification. The certificate should contain the name of each employee trained, date of training, and subject of training. Records of the training must be kept in a safe place. Employers must ensure employees who wear prescription lenses or contacts use PPE that incorporates the prescription or use eye protection that can be worn over prescription lenses. Dust and chemicals present additional hazards to contact wearers. Some companies do not allow the use of contact lenses while working with chemicals or in dusty conditions. While it is possible for chemicals to get trapped under the contact lens in an accident and causing additional damage, some evidence points to the contact protecting the eye in some accidents. What is important to remember is contact lenses are not to be used as protective devices. If eye protection is required, then all workers, including contact wearers, must wear appropriate protective devices. Employees who wear prescription glasses must also wear eye protection when required. Eye and face protection is available, which fits over glasses. Safety goggles and glasses can be used, which incorporate prescription lenses. If an eye injury occurs, quick action can prevent a permanent disability. Employers should establish a first aid plan in the event of an eye injury. Know what to do. Emergency eye washes should be placed in all hazardous areas. First aid instructions should be posted close to potential danger spots. Employees must know where the closest eye wash station is and how to get there with restricted vision, the proper function of the emergency eye wash, and how to flush the eyes. Employees should be trained to know the correct procedures to follow in the event of an accident. Employees should report accidents to their supervisor as quickly as possible. Seek medical attention immediately if an eye injury has occurred. Time is important when your sight or that of your coworkers is at stake. Even if the injury is minor, report it and let trained medical professionals determine the proper care. Your company will provide detailed instructions on who to call and where to report accidents and injuries. Eye injuries are one of the most common occurrences in the workplace today. Know what to do in case of an injury. Always wear your safety glasses or face shields to prevent injuries. If an eye injury does take place, never take it for granted. Get immediate medical care for any eye injury. If you follow the procedures in this video, you could save your or your coworkers' sight.